What's up, guys? You got us an old carrier. Not cooling. Sounds like something's running. The answer fan's running. Huh. The coil is beat up. This is an old one. Can't do much with that. I've got to comb it out a little bit, but anyways, let's uh let's get these panels off. From what I understand, uh, somebody's been here a couple times and fixed a low voltage short last time. So we're gonna get our panels off and see what's going on inside here. So I've got a condenser fan running, so I've apparently got high voltage, no blower. Um, blower overload's not tripped. I don't know why my condenser fan's running. It's fed from that relay, I would assume. And I got no compressors. Compressors are not warm. And I got a tall control panel. I might have to get a ladder up here so I can see better. Somebody's put a little popper in here. That doesn't look like it's tripped. But that circuit breaker there is tripped. So that's gonna be my low voltage circuit breaker there. This is on that goes back to the board. So we've got a low voltage short somewhere. Let's start there before we reset anything. Let's look at this fan motor and see why it might be running. And maybe get a ladder up here. Uh, we'll be looking at all the normal spots for low voltage shorts. If their guy was correct, these are all, this has been rewired. If their maintenance guy was correct, we've been here on a low voltage short before. I got a freeze stat wire that runs back there and is rubbing on the header of the coil, so that could be a problem. Doesn't look like there's an economizer because there's no other wires going through. Motor spins. So let's uh, we'll take a look at the filters and everything in there shortly. Let's get up here and see why we might have tripped this breaker. So relay's not energized. I'm guessing it's sticking. Both fan motors come off that relay. And there's a motor master hiding in here. And I'm not sure where that was mounted. Discharge or liquid line. Probably one of the liquid lines. That's the sensor for the motor master. That's just hanging. And we got some switches here. Uh, those are loss of charge switches. And there's a short right there. So we're gonna have to fix that. Looks like the high pressure's been done away with altogether. Oh, well, this thing's got some age to it, obviously. But um, hopefully that's my only short. That would have definitely caused trip we're gonna go through everything else just to be sure but that wire right there is rubbing pretty good oh that didn't sound real good got compressors and a blower Compressor's kind of loud. Um, so we know everything works. So let's get rid of our shorts and we ought to be all right. Well, as all right as this thing can be. Um, still don't know where the hell this sensor was. Typically you would think it would be on the liquid line. So try to get that mounted on stage one 
liquid line. It just had a wire tie that had broken, but there's obviously my short there, and then we'll check everything else because it's liable to have more than one. All right, so we're not doing anything special here. We've got the wire secured, um, taped the rub out spot, just kind of secured all this so nothing else is going to rub. Looked like the sensor was down here, uh, so I got it wire tied back into place for the motor master. Um, might get a few more wire ties on this stuff just to hold it. But I don't see any more shorts or anything weird going on. Uh, I mean, it kind of looks like it blew the fuse on the board is why somebody put that there. I got no record of anything, um, anything on that end. But my relay here. is closed and that's a normally open contact so it should not be closed so it's the it is the relay stuck closed for the condenser fan motor um they've been doing a lot of work around here because they've got a lot of old equipment so i'm not gonna change this right away go talk to them i might have one on my truck the contactors don't look awful um the, these two have been replaced so I don't see any other low voltage issues and these don't look like they rubbed somebody used different wire and re ran these here and then everything up here on the usual spots is high voltage you can see they've had problems over the years somebody's taped everything um, I'm gonna have to see if I can get into that uh, Free stat and make sure it's not shorted out because it's pinched over there so I'm gonna have to crawl in there and do that and I think we'll have our problem taken care of um, no filters seems reasonable drain pan don't look too terribly bad so I mean this thing's seen better days the uh, coil looks like crap I'm sure the heat exchanger is probably cracked I'm gonna get some crap out of the drain trap. They're, they're gonna need some maintenance because all this stuff needs to be. They need filters. And I'm sure it needs to be clean. Maybe we can try to do something with this coil. I've seen worse, but it ain't good, that's for sure. So, let me get check on the free stack see if i can get to it to secure those wires we ought to be good everywhere else motor master's connected we know we got a relay issue there that needs to go and like i said we can go talk to them about that they've been working on getting a bunch of these things changed out so i don't know i know we put we've done a lot of work here in the past uh year or so but it's been spotty and most of the time when we get to them they look like this and it's like well you, you need to do some maintenance the wheel actually doesn't look too bad so let's check on a free stack and go from there so why not just tear the whole side off the thing um, the clip popped off on me so I had to get it back in there but I've got it situated to where I'm not rubbing that metal there um, it's got tape up here you can tell they've had shorts before it's already been cut at some point over the years um, so I'm gonna put the side panel back on I don't see any oil or anything like that uh, coils dirty I mean it needs to it needs a cleaning I don't know what they're doing down below but I mean we're not gonna clean it today we're just gonna let them know what they got and get rid of their short and we can go from there I did I got no slack so I can't reroute the wires but I don't see any other shorts going through on top of that thing so let's go from there let me get the side panel back on you can see the dirt over the years it's all the way through that coil might get another little bit of time out of this thing but i think it's about time for it to go so now that i got the side back on we can see the heat exchanger it looks like somebody replaced it at some point it's not bad and it doesn't look like i got any cracks there as usual but we do have some holes there's a hole right there you can see the rust on the bottom now, these are all soft spots 
so I'm not gonna make it too much worse than it is. Um, I just assumed the heat exchanger was gonna be cracked, but you can tell just by the front plate. The front plate's not terribly rusted. So I'd say all that got replaced at some point and then cracked again. So we're gonna put all this back together. I think we got our low voltage short taken care of and got some things tidied up. So we ought to be good from there. We'll turn it on and see See what the hell kind of temp drop we got. I'm not going to go as far as putting gauges on this thing. Um, I don't see any signs of leaks or anything crazy, so it is what it is. We're polishing a turd here. So the last thing I did, Carrier uses these cheap plastic to hold these lines together so they don't vibrate. So you just got two wire ties with the screw hole and then a regular wire tie in between so that'll hold them. Way they don't sag and rub anywhere. You can see the clip back here is broke too. It don't take long for them things to break, so at least that's secured. And then uh, I'll be able to turn this guy back on. Have some cooling, some kind of cooling at least. So we should have a call from the thermostat. I just got a screw right there to hold me in place. Lamp draws. Ten amps on that compressor. Ten amps on that compressor. It doesn't. Actually, the airflow on the condenser doesn't feel bad. Somebody must have cleaned the thing. Give it a few minutes, we're gonna get a temp drop on it. Showing 86 or so, we'll let it stabilize. And then go from there. Looks uh, compressors, so I should be about 10 amps on my compressors. That's about what I'm running. 10.4. Nine. There's the other one. Nine eight. I'm getting awful close to the uh, rated amps of those compressors, but what are you going to do with the coil looking like it does and the age this thing's got on it? Not much we're going to be able to do about that. So we're about 83. See what kind of supplier we got. I've got a gap on the curb too. I got airflow up underneath here. Small gap, but it's there. Not sealed very well. It's probably been like that from day one. It didn't move on its own. So we'll see what our supplier gets to and go from there. I might have bought them a little bit of time until this thing craps out all together. We got 67, so that's like a 15 degree drop or something. We've got a problem with stage one, or yeah, stage one. Yeah, it's warm liquid line now. Stage two up top here. Well, that way you can see this nice and condensating. Liquid line was warm. This liquid line was cool. So I'd say I got a nice cold suction line here on stage two. Stage one is running kind of warm. Somebody's, that's a different compressor. Somebody's changed that compressor at some point. And I don't know what, if they put something different in it or what would be in it, but it doesn't feel just by my hand like there's a, might be a slight drop on the dryer but it might be low on charge as well because this line ought to be colder and my temp drop is reflecting that i've got a refrigerant issue somewhere well, i wasn't gonna hook gauges up but it's about 80 degrees out right now 
I'm just assuming that they put R22 in the compressor they changed. So I'm sitting about 120, it's about 40 over ambient, which probably isn't too bad with the coil the way it looks. But, I mean, I'm low on my suction. If I had to guess, I'd say there's a slight restriction in the orifice just with the way the coil looks and they probably haven't had maintenance done. So it's probably slightly restricted. Um, and the coil might actually just be helping it at this point. Um, with the higher pressure, you'll push more refrigerant through. Happens a lot as guys see that low pressure and they start adding just to remedy the suction pressure being low and it'll actually improve, but you can get these things way overcharged. So, I mean, I was doing about 16 degrees. That's about all this guy's gonna do. Uh, I mean, it's got a high superheat because that suction line's not even sweating. And I'm right at the, about the freezing mark. These are analog gauges, so they're not 100% correct, but she's doing about all she can at this point. Um, condensating like crazy. So we're gonna go inside, check the thermostat, make sure um, they didn't crank it down. A lot of times when these things don't cool, they like to turn them down to 50 degrees. And uh, we can go from there. We're gonna write all this up damage sheet exchanger uh, relay I mean this thing's 20 plus years old it's time for it to go and not a whole lot we're gonna be able to you can only polish the turd so much so leave me a comment guys leave a trade better than you found it we'll see y'all next time I got a storm coming at me <laughs>